Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Biological Fitness. Today, we are going to work on the belly. So you've had a couple of opportunities here and there to be on the belly, but this time you're going to be on the belly for the majority of what we're going to do. So we're doing particular movements today, but the first way you might just think of this if you don't spend a lot of time on the belly is that this is about getting comfortable on the belly. And as we go along, I will give you plenty of reminders about how you can take care of yourself. But I'll just say a couple things here at the beginning. The most basic thing is if you really have difficulty being on the belly, you can just go on the belly for Brief amounts of time, as you hear the instructions, you can try just a few movements, maybe not staying on the belly the whole time, but you can roll to rest on your side at any point that you need to. And an easy way to do that if you're on the belly already is to reach one of your arms up the floor and then roll onto that arm or roll your head onto that arm and you can draw your knees up and you're resting there on the side. You can also do any of the lesson that you need to in your imagination. And you could do that from a position of lying on the side or even lying on the back. So just take care of yourself in that way. As I've said before, just because you're listening to me lead the class and I'm giving you certain movements to explore doesn't mean uh, that you have to kind of stick to the program as I'm outlining it. Take care of yourself first. All right. So, of course, being on the belly means you're in a different relation to gravity. You're looking straight down towards the floor. And all of the movements in relation to the floor are going to be different. And it's going to be a different orientation in space, a different sense of where you are. So this is another piece of why it's valuable to work in this position and why in general it's useful to work in many different positions in a practice of awareness through movement. We're probably going to return to the belly in the next class after this one. So we're gonna keep it fairly simple today and we're gonna move at a gradual pace. But I think you're gonna find that by the end of class today, you'll be doing some pretty fun movements, some pretty interesting uh, positions that might remind you of things that you did as a little baby, if you can remember that, or that might make you feel a little bit like a reptile. So now come down to rest on your back on the floor. So we'll be working in this session on the belly, but we'll still use resting on the back as a reference. So as you've done many times before, just begin to get a sense for how your body connects with the floor, sensing the left leg from the heel up into the left side of your groin. Same thing with the right leg. Feel the back of your pelvis on the floor. And in addition to noticing if the weight of the pelvis seems to be a little more to one side, also notice how far up the back of the pelvis do you feel the pressure or how far down? And what's your sense of the space between the lowest vertebra and your spine and the floor? How do you sense that lumbar arch? And then your upper back, how does it rest? 
sense each shoulder blade one at a time, just noticing anything particular that feels different on the left or on the right. Notice how you've arranged your arms and how your head rests on the floor. And then very slowly begin to roll your head from side to side, making a small movement around the middle, not as far as you can possibly go. And as you make this movement, track different points on your skull. So you could listen to the movement of your nose through space. Notice how it feels when your attention is there at the front. Or you could listen to the movement of the back of your head over the surface of the floor. Keep the movement small and be more interested in these different ways of using your attention and how they affect your experience. Now notice one of your ears as it goes towards the floor and away. Your attention is on one side now. Does that change the feeling of the movement? And then move your attention to your other ear. How does it move towards and away from the floor? And then can you notice both ears, one moving towards the floor, one moving away? And then notice again the back of your head, but can you also notice your nose? So where is the pressure on the back of your head and where is your nose pointing? And then can you imagine the back of your head, your nose, and both of your ears go very slowly? Okay, take a rest. Now these movements, of course, were movements that created a rotation in the top of your spine. So now make some gentle movements that create rotation at the bottom of your spine. Just rock your pelvis a little left and right on the floor. Go gently. And how far up your back do you feel those movements? Try lifting each hip more or less the same amount. So if one Hip is easier to lift, make the movement a little smaller on that side. And just travel with your attention from your pelvis up through your spine. Where's the highest point where you actually sense the movement? Can you imagine each of your vertebra beginning to turn around themselves? much in the way that you were sensing the movement of your head. Each vertebra has a little kind of a spike that goes out to the left and the right. It's called the transverse process. And so when you were imagining the movements of your ears rolling your head, you could imagine for each vertebra, there's a little wing on each side and one side goes towards the ceiling as the pelvis goes one way and the other side goes down to the floor and then they switch when you roll the pelvis the other way. Okay, take a rest for a moment. But now roll both your pelvis and your head left and right. And try to imagine the movement all along your spine. In other words, if you were to imagine the whole length of your spine, from the beginning point to when you turn to one side, then what's the shape of your spine? 
And then of course, notice how it goes to the other side. And now, probably what you did is you were turning the pelvis and the head in the same direction. So now take the pelvis to the left as the head goes to the right, and the pelvis to the right as the head goes to the left. Or if you were doing that already, then go ahead and take the pelvis and the head together in the same direction. Just give yourself the opportunity to feel both of these possibilities. Okay, and then rest again on your back. And just feel if these few movements and the way that you were attending to yourself has changed anything about your relationship to the floor feeling of length through your spine, your breathing. And now take your time to please come and roll onto your belly. And in the beginning, just find out what do you need to do to be comfortable on the belly? In a moment, I'm gonna give you a more specific position. If you could do anything you wanted to with your head, anything you wanted to do with your arms, your legs, how would you position yourself exactly? It might be a symmetrical shape and it might not. Just notice where you go. And feel in this position that you've chosen where along the front of your body are you most connected to the floor? And are there parts that are not touching the floor? Or maybe they touch the floor, but a little more lightly than other places. And sense how you breathe being face down. As we go along, if there's any challenge for you to be on the belly, you can always roll to your side to take extra rests. You can just do that whenever you like. But now please bring your hands up underneath your head. Stack one hand on top of the other and then place your forehead on the back of the top hand. So you're looking straight down and find a comfortable distance between your legs. Now very gently roll your head over your forehead, a little left and a little right. Not a lot. Let's see how this feels in this new orientation. And include your eyes as you do this. Your eyes can be closed, but imagine that you're trying to see a little to the left, and see a little to the right. You might even initiate the movements by turning your eyes and see how it invites you to turn the head. And as you did on your back, you can notice the movement of your nose. And then if you think of a point on the back of your head, it's no longer touching the floor as it was, but where would it point to along the ceiling? And notice how your ears are moving through space. The movements are not the largest movements you can make. Again, it's, it's a movement that you're making to clarify the image of what you're doing, to wake up new sensations. Can you feel the movement down between your shoulder blades? And are your shoulders adjusting themselves for this movement? Your arms are underneath you, but between your elbows and your shoulder blades, there may be some movement. Just notice 
in the armpits. And if someone was touching your upper arm, would they feel movement there? Would they feel some slight rotation in the upper arms as a result of the turning with your head and your neck? Okay, leave your head in the middle. And then very gently lift one hip a little bit. Continue just looking straight down with your forehead against your hands. Lift that hip and lower it. And then lift the other hip and lower it. So again, just like you were doing on your back, you're now turning the spine from the bottom by rocking the pelvis a little left and right. allow your legs to be part of this. Can you feel that you can be rolling over your thighs? Feel the knees turning a little towards the inside, a little towards the outside. Your heels could be moving to the inside and the outside, rolling over the tops of your feet. Okay. Pause for a moment. Already, if you're feeling some strain on the belly, you could take a moment to roll to your side, maybe lengthen one arm up the floor so you can rest your head on that arm, coming to the side. And then come back to where you were, the hands stacked underneath your forehead. And same thing like on the back once again, just begin to move the pelvis left and right and the head. The movements can be small. But explore the sensations, explore the image. And you can make movements where the head and the pelvis go together. Or you could make movements where they roll in opposite directions. And take your time. You don't get any benefit just because you do the movements. The benefit from these sessions comes from clarifying the image of what you're doing in such a way that you can make discoveries that lead you to make the same movements with less effort. So throughout this lesson throughout really any session of awareness through movement, in addition to the particular movements you're doing, you can have a sort of general orientation to just sensing, is there anywhere in my body that seems to be straining, that seems to be working harder than elsewhere? Just look to eliminate anything that's not necessary. Okay. Come back and rest on your back again now. Notice what it's like to be back on your back after that brief excursion on the belly. And then once again, make some gentle movements, rolling the head, rolling the pelvis, Exploring any combinations that you'd like to explore. Just see if your sense of the spine might be a little richer from having done those movements on the belly. And now come back to the belly again. And this time, turn your head to the right. Have your right hand in front of your face. So you're looking at your right hand and you could have the elbow bent and then lengthen your left arm down the floor behind you. So the palm of the left hand will be to the ceiling.
And now just gently, again, lift your right hip and lower it. You can make gentle movements. You can wait between movements. Just notice that lifting the right hip and rolling the pelvis to the left, how does that correspond to the shape you already have in your neck by facing your head to the right? So I was mentioning before the idea of those transverse processes, those little wings to each side with your vertebra. Well, in your neck, as you're resting on your left cheek and looking to the right, all the transverse processes on your neck. On the left side, they're pointing towards the floor. And on the right side, they're pointing towards the ceiling. But before you lift your right hip, you might imagine that in the lower spine, the orientation is, is a little more even over the floor. But then as you lift the right hip, just sense how that brings the pelvis into a shape that creates a little more of a, how do I wanna say that? It, 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 it creates a, a turning through the spine that brings the bottom into more into conformity with the shape at the top of the spine. Okay, pause for a moment. And now actually lift your right elbow off the floor so you can stand it over your right hand. So you can still have your hand somewhere that you can see it, maybe more in front of the shoulder now, but the elbow is directly over the hand. It's like what you would do if you were doing a push-up. But you're lying on your belly and you're looking to the right. And now just very gently, imagine that you had your hand on a doorknob. And imagine that you wanted to turn the doorknob to the right and to the left. But don't actually spin your hand on the floor. Just keep the palm connected. But if you make a little movement internally, as if you were trying to turn the floor, but of course the floor doesn't go anywhere, just feel what happens through your arm. See if you can feel some rotation through the forearm and possibly through the upper arm up to the shoulder. And notice the space between the palm of your hand and the floor. And does one of those movements actually grow that space just a little bit? And you can do this gently, but what you might feel is that these movements, they encourage your right shoulder, or maybe you'd rather think of it in terms of your armpit. One of these movements can bring the armpit a little towards the floor, and one can bring the armpit a little way. And as you do that, when you find the movement that helps you lift the armpit, just begin to roll a little bit away from your hand. You can turn your head as if you were gonna to begin to look towards the ceiling and you can also let the right side of your chest come a little way from the floor. Just gently, just a little bit. Come back each time. And you might find as you roll back, whichever of those movements you found of that sort of internal rotation in the arm, if you maintain that turn that helps you lift as you come back, you can lower the chest back to the floor more gradually, more smoothly. Okay, bring the elbow back down to the floor and just rest here on your belly, or if you wish, 
Lengthen one arm up the floor to rest on your side with the head on top of the upper arm. And then come back to your belly and this time have your head turn to the other side. So you'll be looking at your left hand with the elbow bent and have the right arm long behind you on the floor. And begin making movements of lifting the left hip to roll the pelvis to the right. How far up your spine do you feel this movement? And now, as you did on the other side, stand your left hand with the left elbow directly over the palm. The fingers are pointing up in the direction of your head. The hands may be somewhere in front of your shoulder. And look for those movements as if you were turning the doorknob without actually spinning the fingers. Just feel what's the spiral through your arm that gives you a little sense of being able to lift the left side of your chest and roll your head so that your nose goes a little away from the floor. You can move your eyes to the left. And each time you do that, lift your left hip as well. Don't try to make the movement into rolling back onto your right side, but just, just do a little bit. And as you go along, notice what's happening with your left leg. So see if you can allow yourself to roll over the top of your left foot, the left heel going in towards the middle. And what do you want to do with your left knee? See if the knee can soften and bend a little bit. So that as the left heel goes back towards the floor, the knee bends and it points a little to the left. Okay, pause. You can rest your arm on the floor. And then once again, stand the hand as you did before, the elbow over the hand. And just sense that there's that space underneath your arm. So could you now begin to make a movement where you take your head down as if you'd like to see under the gap under your arm? It doesn't mean you have to bring your head all the way under the arm, but take your chin down towards your chest so that you can begin to look downwards in the direction of your feet under the arm. Just make the amount of movement that feels simple right now. Again, notice the engagement of your left arm here. And there's no need to really push the floor, but you will feel that, again, maybe that spiraling movement as if you were turning the hand, like you were gonna point the fingers away from your face, except the fingers stay connected to the floor. They don't actually spin. Does that help you to lift the left shoulder and create a space where the head can go down. And of course, each time bring your head back up to the starting position. And then as you keep going along, notice how you could begin to incorporate, if you're not already doing so, lifting the left hip. And as you lift the left hip, allow the left leg to respond so that the knee bends and the points a little to the left. The left heel turns back towards the floor. And maybe you even feel that 
as the knee bends, it would be nice to draw the heel a little up the floor in the direction of the pelvis. And then when the head goes back up, just straighten the leg down. Again, take your time between movements. You could try timing these movements with the exhalation. So of course, as you exhale, you're expelling the air from your lungs and the movement that you're making is a folding movement. So have the idea that you soften the chest and the breastbone, it can move a little backwards away from your hand to help you bring the head down. And as you go along, you may find that the knee also can come a little further up the floor. So you get a sense that what you're looking at as you look under your arm is you're looking to see your knee as it comes up towards you. And again, straightening the head, or rather straightening the leg down as you bring the head back up to its starting position where you're just looking to the left. Okay, come back now onto your back and rest on your back. Notice how the two sides of your back are connected to the floor. Notice how each of your legs is resting. And roll your head a little side to side. Last thing you did, you did it more on one side. So perhaps that's reflected in the movement of rolling your head here. Then rest your head, roll your pelvis a little left and right. And then come back onto your belly, and this time have your head facing to the right. You can lengthen the left arm down the floor behind you. And stand your right hand in front of the shoulder, the elbow over the hand. And on this side, begin to take your head down as if to see under the arm and then bring it back up. Now at this point, you're not deliberately doing anything with your right leg. But see if you can feel that lowering the head down, it's rounding the top of your spine. And so even if you don't intentionally begin to make movements with the pelvis or the leg. Just see if something's stirring down there. And then when you wanna maybe go a little bit further, become a little more intentional that you can roll your right heel inwards, and allow the knee to point out to the right. As the head comes down, the right hip is lifting. And little by little, maybe, not the largest movement you can do right away, but you begin to draw the right knee up the floor as the head goes down. And then of course, straighten the leg down as the head goes back up. And each time you make the movement, when you come back, pause. So that when you go again, you can have the idea that this is going to be more comfortable simpler than the previous movement. So while you're moving, you're aware of any sense of strain somewhere in your chest or your neck, maybe in your hip joint or something you're doing with your leg, wherever it is. But then when you make the next movement, you ask that part of yourself to simply not do as much work. OK, 
Okay, pause for a moment. And now come back to the same thing. Bring the head down and bring the knee up. But then once you've done that, stay there. Stay in that position. And then don't move the leg. Just bring your head back up. And then take it down to see the knee again. So the right hip will be a bit further away from the floor now. And you're still rounding in your upper back, folding through your chest to see down, and then bringing the head back up. You can think as you come back up, it's like you're pushing something with the back of your head. And feel what's happening underneath your right shoulder blade. Right elbow standing over the hand, and the shoulder blade is more or less fixed in space, but you're moving your chest. So see if you can get a sense that someone could rest their hand on your right shoulder blade. It might move a little bit, but it doesn't move as much as what you're doing with your head. But there might be a relative movement between the ribs and the shoulder that you can feel. Okay, straighten your leg down next time when you bring your head up and then rest there. And then once again, stand the right hand and now bring the knee up and bring the head down so that you're in that rounded position and stay there. And now keep your head where it is and slowly lengthen your leg back down and then draw the knee back up. Go gently here. And then after a few movements, once again, take the knee and your forehead towards and away from each other. So make the movement it changes the shape of your spine, both from the bottom and the top. And there's no need to think that you're actually gonna to touch your forehead to your knee, but if you did touch, that's kind of where you're aiming from. Now, how would it be different if you thought that the way you were aiming was you were trying to bring your nose towards your knee? What changes in your spine when you do that? Make a couple movements thinking of your nose. And then go back to the idea that it's your forehead coming down towards your knee. And pause for a moment and rest. Just stay where you are. You can rest the elbow on the floor if you'd like. And then stand the hand again. And now you're going to do something that's going to feel, I think, significantly different. So again, slow down. But what would it be like if you thought of taking your chin towards your knee and your knee towards your chin? Feel that's very different in your neck. Maybe you're going to do a smaller movement here. And now think that you are going to kiss your knee with your mouth. If you like, you can even make that movement with your lips as you go along. And then notice the change in your spine each time you change the idea. Go back to thinking of your nose towards your knee. And then softening your chest even more, think of taking your forehead towards your knee, your knee towards your forehead and straightening down.
And now think of taking the top of your head towards your knee and the knee towards the top of the head. So you really have to get round here. Again, the size, the movement isn't what's important, but think of the middle of your back, how it has to move backwards. Okay, very good. And come back and rest on your back. Just notice again how your relationship to the ground is changing as you go along. Your breathing. Gently roll your head. And bring it to the middle. Roll to lie on your belly, turn your head to the left, stand your left hand with the elbow over the hand, and just begin to explore on this side, taking the head down and bringing the knee up. Maybe you could make five or 10 movements where it's like you're in a trance. You're not trying to go further. You're not trying to figure anything out. You just allow your body to tell you what it needs, where you need to let go a little more, where in the course of making the movement, maybe you're actually trying to do too much. You're trying to go a little too far so you can back off. What would it mean to make each movement more pleasurable than the last? So try making the movements as you exhale, softening the chest. And now as you go on, you might imagine it's as if somehow someone could reach inside to tie a string around a vertebra in the middle of your back somewhere. And to help you take the knee and your head towards each other, they pull that vertebra backwards. Imagine exactly which vertebra it is and feel that that vertebra goes further back than any other one. And then after a few movements, pick a vertebra that's higher up the spine. Maybe it's somewhere in the region between your shoulder blades. How would that change the movement? Where exactly would you be looking towards, down towards your knee or your upper leg? And then suppose it was a vertebra in the lower half of your back that initiated the movement. So even though the idea of the head and the knee coming together again and again is the same idea, there's so many different ways that you could do this. Think now of the different points along front of your face, but each time you aim your mouth, or your nose, forehead down towards your knee, think which vertebra moves the most backwards when I orient myself like that. And then remember, if you think of taking the chin, that's going to be really quite a different shape in the upper back and the neck. That's worth exploring. Do that one carefully. And then find out if you can make a movement. And again, which vertebra would move 
most prominently back to help you take the top of your head towards the knee. Okay, take a rest now. If it's okay for you, just stay on your belly. You can change the position of your head if you like. If it's better, you can once again roll to your side and rest your head on your arm. But now come back to, again, facing the left, standing the left elbow over the hand. Round yourself to take your head down and your knee up. Stay there. And then one time take your head up, leaving the leg where it is, and then bring the head back down. And then straighten the leg down and bring the knee back up. So move the head and then the leg in alternation, but only moving in one place at a time. And then go back to taking the head and the knee towards and away from each other for a few movements. And then bring the head and the knee closer and stay there for a moment. And now imagine that there was a string that was attached to your forehead or maybe wrapped all the way around your head, however you like to think of it, and it runs down to your knee. And so now when you bring your head back up to the starting position, the knee goes further up the floor. And then from there, imagine that it's a stick so that when your head goes down, you push the knee down and in the head, you're looking down under the arm, the leg is straight again. And keep doing that. So when you draw the leg up, you draw the knee up the floor, the head goes back up. And as the head looks down under your arms, then the leg straightens down. And I mentioned that you could think of this as a string, or you could think of it as a stick. Those images suggest pushing or pulling. So when the head is up, to do it differently than before, you could think that there's a string and that the knee pulls the head down. And then when the knee comes up, it's as if it was pushing through a stick to push your head up the floor. So different ways of playing with that image and it might actually feel slightly different when you change your intention in that way. Okay, and then finally, just one last time, think of taking the nose towards the knee and the knee towards the nose and the forehead and the knee, and then the top of your head and the knee. And come back onto your back. And once again, come to your belly.
And now stand both hands on the floor with both elbows in the air. And you can start with your forehead facing the floor, touching the floor. And now would you just simply pick your head up a little bit, turn it to the right, and then lower it so that you're resting on your left ear. And then gently pick your head up and turn it so you're looking to the left with your right ear on the floor. Keep doing this very slowly, gently. Could be that it's still simpler for you to turn the head to one side. And remember how before you were shifting your attention between your nose, the back of your head, two ears, And you can think of those little wings on the left and the right of each of the vertebrae, down your neck, down between your shoulder blades. Think how the wings on one side move towards the floor, on the other side, they move towards the ceiling. And maybe there's a shift in the position of your armpits. Maybe you can feel that your chest is part of this movement. It's not just turning the head and the neck. And if you lift a little bit higher, you might actually lift the top of the breastbone a little bit off the floor. Feel that you rest maybe a little more on one side of the breastbone than the other as you make these movements. And what about your pelvis? Can your pelvis be turning to one side, turning to the other side? Your thighs, your knees rolling over the floor, the heels turning left and right. Do your heels go in the same direction that you're looking or do they go opposite? What do you feel? So how can this movement really be, if you imagine a turning that goes all the way down the length of your spine, and even as if there was a line that continued down between your legs, between your knees and your feet, you imagine that whole line turning around itself as you roll your legs on the floor. Okay, and then rest with your head to one side. And both arms are still in that push-up position. And now could you like this, starting slowly, on the side that you're looking, take the head down and bring the knee up. And you're going to course, round yourself, but it's going to feel a little different because that arm behind you is also standing. And then you come back up, make a few movements like that. And then the next time you bring your head up, pick your head up and turn it to the other side and begin to make this movement going down in the other direction. Drawing up the other knee. Okay, take a rest. Your head could be turned to either side. You can allow your arms to rest on the floor. And again, as you go back to the movements, remember to take care of yourself. Just do the amount that 
is adequate to what you need. Not trying to achieve something, but now go down once on the right and come up and then turn your head and go down once to the left. Feel how you're going side to side here. And anytime you're making a movement like this to one side and the other, it's an opportunity to compare and contrast. So where exactly does the knee go when it comes up on the left? And where does it go on the right? As the knees come up the floor, they're pointing in the direction that you're looking, but where is the heel in relation to the knee? Does each heel come up towards the sit bone or does it come almost directly up under your spine? And is that a little different left and right? And how are you using your arms? Do you remember that idea of that internal spiral through the arm as if you were turning a doorknob with your hand against the floor? You might even notice as you go down on each side, what's the distance of your nose to the floor? Can it sort of stay parallel to the floor? So you're really sliding over the side of your head or on one side, do you find that you're turning your nose into the floor a little bit, which is likely to interrupt the movement. So again, you don't need to try to make the movements larger or go faster, although as you continue, you may find that things get smoother. You might start to feel like a reptile. A sense of swimming or crawling. Can you imagine again that string tied to one vertebra, initiating the movements? so that you begin to really think that the movements come from your spine. The movement of the middle of your back backwards draws the knee and the head towards each other. And then as the vertebra comes back forward, you straighten out and you turn your head to the other side and then again, rounding down on the other side. Okay. Whenever you have had enough for now, you of course, always come back to this another day and just come back onto your back and rest on your back. So it got a little more vigorous at the end, just allow yourself to calm and slow yourself, let your breath slow down. Sense how each of your legs rests on the floor, your pelvis. Imagine the length of your spine and feel each of your shoulder blades and each of your arms. How does your head rest now? And then gently roll your head one last time, a little bit left and right. But imagine this movement all the way down the bottom of the spine. Just imagine how this movement could encourage something that goes all the way down. Can you feel something change in your hip joints? And then just to kind of make that a little clearer, every time you roll your head to the left, think of lengthening your right heel down the floor. And every time you roll your head to the right, think of lengthening down with your left heel. Back and forth. Very good. Leave it all alone. Bend your knees, stand your feet. Roll to the side and taking your time, come all the way up into standing.
And as you stand, just slowly turn to look over one shoulder behind you and the other, feeling this rotation through your whole spine, which is completely freed from the floor now. Feel how your pelvis coordinates with your head, the shoulders. And then just very gently lower your head to look down. Remember the rounding that you did when you were on your back. And then look a little bit up, lifting your chest, dropping your belly as you do so. A little down and a little up. Can you stay balanced over your feet as you do that? And if this was something new for you to spend this amount of time on the belly, just take a moment to appreciate yourself for practicing this way today. And we'll have a chance to do a little more on the belly next time. But for now, just take a walk around the room. And just take a moment to really appreciate this feeling that you've discovered through your practice. What would it be like to be able to access this feeling on another day or another situation, maybe in the company of friends? Just appreciating this moment at the end of an awareness through movement lesson is one way to begin to imprint the organization, the sense of your body and your movement that comes from doing this practice. And that's a little bit of a step that you can use to help to build new habits that you keep with you. And it doesn't always require you to get on the floor and spend the same amount of time. But if you really notice any particular aspects of what's happening for you now, just make a little note. It's like you could take a somatic snapshot of how you feel to reference later. Okay, well with that, we'll end the session. See you next time, take care.